Thousands of years had passed since the battles between the two priest castes, which triggered the decline of Atlantis. The mysteries of Atlantis and its magic era had been forgotten for a long time. The invisible forces of the spiritual hierarchy and the space brotherhood secretly introduced a brotherhood to erect a chain of world empires. Entire civilizations have risen under the secret guidance and inspiration of this brotherhood. All the secret societies constructed the world's temples and cities, while God erected his temple, man, who had reached maturity in the playground of infinite experience. In ancient Egypt, the Brotherhood of the Snake had been in power for a long time, when arguments originating from the old conflict between the two brotherhoods of Shambhala and Agatha from Atlantis arose and flared up time and time again. This came to a climax in an argument between the Babylonian and Hebrew castes, in which both argued that they were the god race of the extraterrestrials. Thousands of years went by in which the same game of power and polarity opposites took place. Finally, the Hebrew Brotherhood on Shambhala's side won against an Aramaic branch of Agatha, with the help of Atlantean high technology, such as the Ark of the Covenant. During the entire time frame of the Old Testament, from the flood to Abraham and Moses, who received new guidance from God guardians, there was a brother war between the scattered Aryan castes of Atlantis with their ever lower descending consciousness. Thousands of years went by, and the Hebrew caste system with its tradition of lodges blossomed and freed itself from the high priest Egyptian power. Once again, the Spear of Destiny was taken from one culture and handed over to another. The Space Brothers secretly inspired the Hebrew priests and guided them in order to direct the newly chosen people of God. The Hebrew leadership role strengthened and generations grew up under the influence of the deep mystique of the Hebrew initiation scripts and ceremonies of the rabbis. The prophets told the priests that they could foresee the birth of a new Messiah who would bring a new age. The prophecies also said that the Messiah would have incredible abilities and would be more powerful than all the world's kings. So the Hebrew Brotherhood knew for a long time approximately when the Messiah would be born and they were very afraid to lose their spiritual and worldly powers. No wonder King Herod, when he heard of the birth of Christ, sent people to look for him. The Brotherhood feared that their power would be taken from them. By the time Christ started his work, visiting the scriptural scholars and making it clear to them that God's life was in the inner life of man and not in their dead scriptures, the end of the magical era of the Atlantean Brotherhood was not far off. From Atlantis' dark age to the rebirth of light, the path of becoming human was long and cruel. Through thousands of years, the Brotherhoods worked undercover in all cultures. Thus, we can trace their path from Atlantis to Egypt, to the Holy Land, through Greece to Rome, and in all European royal courts. In recent times, they sent their leaders to new countries, such as America and Australia. Today, there are very few countries which have not been led from the outside by the old world order of the Brotherhoods. All 33 pyramid stones of the secret world conspiracy of the Illuminati and Freemasons are organizations of the imperialistic and materialistic pyramid a manifestation of God's male hierarchy on earth, the spiritual powers of Lucifer, the carrier of light. During the time of King Solomon, God's messengers and wardens, the Elohim, entrusted the secret brotherhood, God's temple builders, to construct 
God's temple. The Freemasons and Illuminati, meaning the enlightened, and earlier called the Templars, had the difficult task of building God's temple. Symbolically, God's temple represents the human animal, half man, half beast, who has to be taught in order for him to live through every possible experience, both positive and negative, and continue learning through these experiences until he has transcended his lower attributes. These powers financed all wars and conspiracies, but also funded welfare organizations and extensive government plans of the Western world in order to offer human souls a playground for experiences. Now, for that very reason, we can understand the meaning of I am the one power who desires good and creates evil. I am the one power who desires evil and creates good. Since Atlantis, all leading forces of Western religion and state systems have received partial initiation and helped to educate man. But now, the time has come when the temple has completed its purpose and the Elohim reappear to wake up all completed souls. Just as parents, who finally have to let go of their grown-up child so that it can be independent, this film will set the stage for the Illuminati and will transmit to them with absolute clarity that its mission and Elijah's prophecy have been fulfilled. Indeed, now everything works in reverse. The individual needs to deprogram himself of all social, religious and other concepts which he thinks makes him a human being. Likewise, as every social structure represents the foundation of a civilization, the purpose is not to destroy this structure, but to liberate it from the ego structure of the lobbies. In the same way, the purpose is not to destroy God's temple, the human body, but to deprogram the ego structure. How? By letting go of all negative perceptions. Everything is only an experience, because nobody is totally negative. The negative within us and in the world teaches us how to slowly receive understanding. Without darkness, there would be no experience of light. No matter what we do, we reach understanding of the realization of true love through our negative actions, which lie behind true love. Through this, perhaps we can understand the purpose of this secret brotherhood, which on God's behalf, financed and promoted all that is both positive and negative until finally man has developed to the point where he recognizes a brother in the other person and becomes positive by his own motivation. The growth of humanity into true mankind is like the alchemical gold which was thrown into the fire until all impurities were separated from the pure gold. On Earth, all social power systems since Atlantis have been led by the Brotherhood of the Snake, which in turn was guided by spiritual and extraterrestrial forces of the Guardians. In short, whether it be monarchy, capitalism or communism, whichever strive for power and leadership has been spiritually influenced by the Sun hierarchies during the Dark Age and now represents the male materialistic forces. Of course, we have been guided by our religions and powerful leaders during the Dark Age, but these in turn have also been led by spiritual masters. Many people of lower grades of initiation do not even realize that extraterrestrial and cosmic influences of the sun hierarchies have been placed at the top of the pyramid of the lodges. During the Dark Age, sun hierarchies, the Illuminati, are the rulers, accomplished masculine forces, the builders of matter. In the last golden age, moon hierarchies, the luminari, the accomplished feminine cosmic forces, ruled and brought matriarchy. The completed souls of the next cycle unite within themselves the sun and moon, which is symbolically a marriage of mind and matter. 
The union of man ego and woman soul within a human being leads back to immortality. In the future, the higher self will be a human being on earth. Christianity and the Templar Order. Each time it was written down, the true revelation of the divine was falsified because every testament always represents an interpretation of that not experienced. This is how the world religions originated with all their different sects which strictly followed dead words to the letter and were misled from generation to generation further away from the truth. After Christ's death, his words were wrongly interpreted also and in parts purposely falsified. During the first century, great disappointment was felt within the first original Christian congregations when part of the scriptures were falsely interpreted by the secret Hebrew brotherhoods who stood on the side of the Romans. The Atlantean Gospel of the Life of the Essenes, Essena, which still includes the teachings of reincarnation but excludes any interpretation of evil led through the centuries to the strong division between heaven and hell. Peter in his last days recognized what had happened and asked to be hanged by his feet symbolizing the world's confused situation. Back then, all his followers were only comforted by the knowledge that one day in the future, just before the return, they would be reborn in order to inherit the world. To summarize what the Bible says about the coming of Jesus Christ, uh, one could go to the words of Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, this chapter is often seen as a uh, synopsis, you might say, of the Apocalypse or the writings of the Apostle John. And in this particular chapter, Jesus outlined very clearly how he will come. Uh, he will come visibly, uh, personally, as a real person. Uh, he will come uh, in the midst of, of noise, so it will be an audible event, and a very dramatic, uh, powerful and glorious event. He said he's going to return uh, with all his glory, the glory of his Father, the glory of the holy angels, uh, it will be a dramatic uh, event. For a long time, Christianity and the secret lodges of the Brotherhood had entered the European royal courts, where various knightly brotherhoods went to look for their roots in the Holy Land. Crusaders from all the European countries started on their journey to the Holy Land. Some of these knights had not been initiated by the Freemason Brotherhood, who had already at the time total control over the Vatican. They were searching for the truth because they disagreed with the activities of the head of the church. Especially during the 11th century, German and Baltic crusaders traveled to Syria, where an old master called the Elder of the Days told them the whole truth about the Atlantean Brother War of the priesthood castes.